Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today to our very first Wedfully webinar. My name is Cass, and I am the head of operations here at Wedfully and our resident virtual wedding expert. I'd love to quickly introduce who will be supporting me today on this webinar. First, from the Wedfully team, we have my colleague Colby. Hi everyone, my name is Colby. I'm the head of customer success here at Wedfully. I've been in the event industry for many years and I've been lucky enough to help produce hundreds of weddings here at Wedfully and I am so excited to be here with all of you today. Thank you so much, Colby. In behind the scenes, we have Brianna, one of our amazing virtual coordinators helping us out in the chat. So if you have any questions while the Wedfully team is talking, go ahead and leave them in the QA function, which is in the bottom toolbar of your screen. Brianna will be answering your questions throughout the webinar today, and we also have dedicated time at the end for Q&A. So um, I'll have her just send a quick chat in the chat just to say hi to everyone. Thank you, Brianna. And we also have a real Wedfully past couple on the call today. We have Kelly and Joe, who are one of our absolute favorite couples. And they're gonna be providing advice on virtual wedding planning. They'll be sharing their favorite moments from their wedding. Kelly and Joe were actually married on 1010. So happy four months and one day anniversary, you two. We are so thrilled that all of you are joining us today, and we hope that you walk away from tonight having learned a little bit about Wedfully, how it works, and get all of your questions answered. So this is a little bit about what you can expect from today's webinar. You'll hear about how Wedfully works, learn about the key players that you'll need for your wedding, hear about the tech that you'll need to run a successful virtual wedding. And we'll talk about a few different types of weddings as well. We're gonna give you some creative ideas for your virtual wedding. And then we get to hear from Kelly and Joe, one of our actual Wedfully couples. And lastly, we'll leave plenty of time for Q&A at the end. So as we mentioned, don't forget to leave those questions in the chat or Q&A function. And I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to Cass to kick things off. Thanks so much, Colby. So Wedfully has helped plan and produce hundreds of virtual weddings and no two are exactly alike. We pride ourselves on being able to translate your wedding vision into reality and we'll work together to create a beautiful wedding that's everything that you wished for and more. Some Wedfully weddings include in-person guests and we would consider this to be a combo of both virtual and in-person. We call this a hybrid wedding, which we'll touch on a little bit more later while others are fully virtual. Some consist of elaborate interactive elements or religious or cultural traditions, while others are really just short and sweet and simple. So it's really up to you to decide what your journey is. Team will be there to walk through you through every step of the process and clearly lay out all that you and your partner need to know and do to make your Wedfully wedding a huge success. In total, you will meet over Zoom with your Wedfully coordinator five times. That includes two planning calls, one AV call, one rehearsal call, and the wedding itself. I get asked all the time, how long does it take to plan a virtual wedding? And I like to say a good rule of thumb is six weeks. So from the time that you book and pay, which allows you to reserve your wedding date, you'll have six weeks to iron out all the details and meet with your coordinator and then get married. So I am now going to talk about some of the key players for your wedding. You and your partner will, of course, be the stars of your wedding day. However, there are a few other key players who will help honor and celebrate your love to ensure your virtual wedding goes off without a hitch. So the first person I will talk about is your virtual coordinator from Wedfully. Your coordinator will be there to help you every step of the way in your wedding planning journey. Your coordinator will be your trusted resource the entire way, along with running your wedding on the actual day of. They're always just an email away. And as Cass mentioned earlier, you will have several scheduled calls with them throughout the entire wedding planning process. 
The next person and the most important person almost on this list, I would say, is your on-site contact. And trust us when I say this person is key to making sure your wedding goes smoothly. And since the Wedfully team is 100% remote, this person will act as the eyes and ears and hands on your wedding day, assisting with tech setup and generally making sure things go according to plan. This person could potentially be on the phone with your wed fleet coordinator for the duration of your wedding, and your on-site contact is an imperative part of your virtual wedding experience. So choose that tech-savvy friend or family member who has, a great who has great communication skills and isn't a part of the wedding party. A good rule of thumb is, you know, pick that friend or family member who always texts you back right away and not someone whose phone is always on 1% or could potentially be MIA. This person will ideally be on your audiovisual calls and your rehearsal calls, so that way they have a full understanding of your wedding and what is expected of them. The next person I'll talk about is your officiant. So this person will be the one officiating your wedding. And keep in mind that at least one officiant may be required in person. Um, it could legally be required by the state that you're getting married in. It's different everywhere. So make sure and look into that ahead of time. And your officiant will likely be the one that helps you put your ceremony script together with the help of you and your partner. So like I said, they could be in person or virtual depending on where the location, where you're located. And lastly, there's quite a few other vendors that you could be working with on your wedding day. Um, you could have your caterer, someone making a wedding cake or your dessert, a florist, live music, a DJ. Those are all just some examples of some of the vendors you could be working with um, as key players for your wedding. So let's talk a little bit about the technology that's needed to execute on a virtual wedding. So the first thing is that you need to have video equipment. This video equipment allows your guests to see the wedding and allows you to see your guests. And we like to use phones for this. So we use phones for the cameras. Everyone has one. It's probably in your back pocket or sitting next to you. Um, that phone is going to be in a tripod. And I'll talk a little bit about that in just a second. But I like to say that you should have around two cameras, so two phones delivering different types of angles for your wedding. Any device that's able to connect to Zoom can be used as a camera for your wedding, but we highly recommend using smartphones for your cameras because you have them, they're everywhere. You can use an iPhone, you can use an Android, you can use a Pixel or any phone that is relatively new and um, you can check the uh, specifications of your phone online. Um, but anything 2016 or newer would be best. Um, we get a lot of questions if people can use DSLRs or GoPro cameras or external webcams, and you absolutely can, and the video quality can be very nice on those. Um, but something to keep in mind is that the Zoom stream is broadcast in 720p, it's not 1080p. So the need to have high-end cameras well, there isn't a need at all. You can use, like we said, just the phones that you have. Um, also, it adds an additional layer of complexity if you do decide to go the DSLR or, or GoPro route. So make sure that you do some research on how that does hook into Zoom. So it's something that both you and your on-site contact feel comfortable handling on the day of your virtual wedding. And then you'll also need a speaker or a microphone. We use something really cool that's called an e-meet. We call it the magic speaker. You can get it on Amazon. Um, it is a, a conferencing speaker, essentially. It's quite small and it acts as both a speaker and a mic. Um, it just needs to be connected to just one of those phones. So just one of your phones will connect to this microphone speaker combo and it provides clear audio for you and for your guests. So we can clearly um, hear you and you can clearly hear your virtual coordinator slash MC. Um, so besides those two things, so phones and the audio device, which is that mic uh, speaker combo, you need to have some tripods. Uh, you'll need a tripod for each device holding the camera steady. You can find these fairly cheap online, but you definitely do not want to be the wedding that has your tripods face plant mid ceremony. So I would say um, a good tripod is around like 30 or $50. 
Um, they're, like I said, they're not super expensive. Uh, regardless of whatever tripod you use, you wanna make sure it does have a phone adapter. So it's a little um, adapter that sits on the top of the tripod that your phone will go into. And then we don't want anything dying mid-ceremony. So we recommend purchasing portable battery packs that can be plugged into each of those phones. And I've seen a lot of couples actually um, plug them in and then tape the portable battery pack to the tripod itself. So it is secure and stable. Um, if you are interested in seeing if you have a virtual officiant or if you decide to do a group dance, which we'll talk about the group dance later, but you may want to be able to see your guests on Zoom. So you might want to get a monitor or a projector or some type of TV, and this allows you to see your guests. Um, generally, you'll only be looking at the screen during your reception, so during the group dance, during toasts, it's, et cetera. So we re recommend using a laptop that's plugged into a monitor or a TV via an HDMI cable. Um, a small projector will also work if you're indoors. So that's also an option. Um, and certainly, but definitely not least, you need the internet. Um, this is the most important part, just like Colby talked about earlier, having that on-site contact. I would say like on-site contact and having Wi-Fi are like the two most crucial linchpins to make sure that you can have a successful virtual wedding. Um, you need to have a strong internet connection or cell service. Um, and we like to say five megabytes up. And if that sounds like you don't understand what I'm talking about, that's okay. You can go to speedtest.net on your browser, um, on your phone or on your laptop in your actual ceremony location. And you can run a simple speed test and you can see, is it coming in at five megabytes up? If it is amazing, we are green lighted to go and to have a virtual wedding in your ceremony area. Um, a lot of these things that I've talked about can be rented from Webfully to make the technology piece even easier. Um, we rent out packages of these devices so you can literally, you get the package in the mail, you can set it up and you're ready to go. So now we're going to talk about some different types of weddings. First up would be a hybrid wedding. So what is a hybrid wedding? You might be asking yourself. Some Wedfully weddings are considered a hybrid wedding, which would be a combination of virtual and in-person guests. A lot of our weddings fall into this category. Why do we love them here at Wedfully? You can get still get the intimate feel of a small wedding while not having to cut your guest list. You can have that special small group of people in person and have everyone else on Zoom, so everyone wins. Another type of wedding that we see a lot of are micro weddings. So micro weddings are considered to be a small wedding with less than 50 people in person. We love them because you can get married at a more affordable, unique wedding venue without having to sacrifice your budget. Um, micro weddings are super budget friendly. Um, we see a lot of people renting Airbnbs to do micro weddings, or they're getting creative and outdoor park locations. Um, it really opens the doors for a lot of unique venues since your overall guest count is significantly smaller. Um, and who doesn't want a beautiful Pinterest worthy wedding? That's why we love micro weddings because you're really just being super budget savvy. The photo on the right is Emily and Eric. We worked with them this summer and she planned her virtual wedding in just three months. She got married at her aunt's house in Vail, Colorado and used the majority of her budget on floral decorations. She had a beautiful floral arch and a beautifully catered dinner for less than 30 people. Um, I asked her today, you know, what, where did her budget come in at? And overall, she came in under 10K for her entire wedding budget. And um, she has no regrets. She loved it. 
So the next type of wedding that I'm going to talk about is a fully virtual wedding. So a fully virtual wedding is when you have all of your guests on Zoom, except you and your partner, and maybe your officiant. As I mentioned earlier, in some locations, you have to have your officiant in person, but you can, in some locations, have your officiant on Zoom. So this type of wedding can have the feel of an elopement, but you're not limiting any of your guests. Another upside of this wedding is it has that really beautiful, intimate feel. This picture on the left on this slide um, is a couple that I worked with last year, Danielle and Scott. They had originally planned a large wedding at this exact same venue that they got married at. And they decided to cut it and make it completely virtual. And as you can see, they had an incredible backdrop. Their florals were amazing. They had their officiants there, but no one missed out. And all of their guests had that perfect front row seat for their wedding day. And no one felt like they missed out on anything. Um, another thing I would love to talk about would be how to add in your own personality to your virtual wedding. You, there's a lot of creative, unique ways that you can add in your own little stamp on your wedding day. So with all these different types of weddings, there's a lot of fun ways to keep your guests engaged throughout the wedding. And you can all of them are going to walk away from your wedding saying how much fun they had. So make it engaging. This isn't your typical, you know, work zoom live stream we encourage all of our couples to engage with their guests as much as possible this can be done through our virtual reception tables add-on surprise videos we have lots of fun ways to keep your guests engaged throughout the wedding and our virtual coordinators are well versed in giving you some creative ideas on how to make sure your guests are engaged um, getting personal. So incorporate moments throughout the wedding that are incredibly personal to you and your partner. Think personalized branding, engagement photos, use music that is incredibly personal and special to, the each, to each of you. Record videos, um, interview each other. The possibilities are really endless on how to make it really personal for you as a couple. Play a fun game of trivia. As we all know, Zoom has the polls function and you can play a really fun game of trivia. All your guests could maybe learn something a little bit new about each of you. You can even have a selfie moment or even a kiss cam. We have our group dance that Cass mentioned earlier, which is a really fun way to see where all your guests are attending your wedding from. Um, another fun idea would be to create a signature cocktail recipe and send that recipe out to all of your guests in your invitation before the wedding. Then everyone can have the same drink on your wedding day and um, be drinking cocktails together um, on Zoom. Let your creative juices flow for adding in your own personality and spice to your wedding. There's so many different ways that you can make it your own and the Wedfully team um, is here to help with that. Thank you so much, Colby. So I'd now love to pass the mic over to Kelly and Joe to talk about their experience using Wedfully for their virtual wedding. All right. Hey everybody, I'm Joe. This is my I'm beautiful Kelly. wife, Kelly. Um, so we are going to talk about first why we chose to work with Wedfully. You wanna start? Yeah, so um, I think we learned about it through my mom who read a post about it in the New York Times. Um, and she mentioned virtual weddings to us and um, that she had read about Wedfully. And so Joe kind of, she mentions a lot of things to us about things she reads in the New York Times. So Joe took that and ran with it um, and looked up um, Wedfully online. Yeah, I mean, so we, we got engaged during kind of this whole lockdown thing. So we didn't already have a wedding planned. Um, and when we, you know, after we got engaged, we kind of had a quick, light, quick idea that we didn't want to wait for COVID to go away. We didn't know how long it was gonna last. Um, so we decided to just, you know, we got engaged in April and six months later, we planned this wedding with the help of Wetfully and got married. So it was yeah. quick, quick, uh, quick and fun, fun times. Um, and then some of our favorite moments um, from the wedding. One of, I mean, I think just the most obvious is that we were able to celebrate with our friends and family all over the world. So we have really close family friends in Japan. Um, Joe has family in the Philippines. We have um, friends in Africa. So we were able to have all of them join us, although it was different time zones, but it was just an opportunity that we 
may not have had even with COVID to have all of those people there with us. Um, I mean, even without COVID to have mm. all those people yeah. there with us. So. so we ended up doing a hybrid mm. wedding as they mentioned. Uh, we had 20 people on site, um, which was basically just our immediate family. And um, we each had my best man and her matron of honor also mm. traveled. Um, but then everybody else, you know, we kind of just said, hey, you know, they all wanted to be there in person and we all wanted them there in person. But uh, my parents are a little high risk uh, with COVID. And so, you know, I told them all, it's important that they are there. So unfortunately, nobody else can be there. And they all understood and um, really enjoyed the Wedfully experience anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I think too, we, because of that, we spent a lot of time talking to people and letting them know that it was going to be virtual because of COVID. We were in connection with all of our family um, in a lot of ways. And so, um, we were able to kind of prep people for um, for being on our virtual wedding. Um, we used a website to help people to um, be able to RSVP. And then we both reached out to family just to make sure people had gotten the link, make sure that they were kind of connected. Um, <clears throat> and then I think some of our family were a little bit hesitant, but everyone, we worked hard to make sure that people knew how to... Um, how to log in and our parents worked closely with the older relatives of ours to make sure um and really our guests were super pleased with how it turned out i think it felt very um connected and um even reported and told my especially us us but also my parents how they felt like they were even closer to us than they would have been if they were in a church um because we had 20 on site, but then maybe over 200, I guess, guests on our virtual um, wedding. So yeah. and we also had um, a TV set up so that we could see the guests because one of my favorite parts of the wedding was the group dance. Um, you know, we had, uh, we played, um, I want to dance with somebody, the Whitney Houston song. And then we got to see a lot of our friends and family from all over the world pop up on the screen. And it was a really good way to connect the in-person and the virtual world together. And we all we were all just dancing together, having a good time, celebrating our marriage. Um, and so that got, yeah, that was one of my favorite parts. And, um, you know, it, a lot of it too was just the guests. And one, one thing that we added to our wedding was, I, I joked on our website and I decided to put that the dress code would be pants optional. Um, Kelly didn't even know I did that for a little bit. And then I was like, oh yeah, I forgot we launched it live and it says pants optional, but a lot of our guests, took that to heart and you know they they were wearing pants but they were fun pants they wore fun shorts one of my best friends from college has these pants that have a wolf on it and so he was highlighted during the uh the group dance and even some of kelly's coworkers were like who was that guy in the wolf pants like that was so funny and they still talk about it to this day uh so like again it, it was a lot of fun just having the guests be um really into it uh they were also very active in the chat function which we loved looking at after the wedding. Um, you know, it was kind of like seeing a live feed, like a Twitter feed of everyone's comments. Because when you're in a regular wedding, everyone's quiet. You can't say anything, but everyone was very vocal on the chat. And so later on, we got to go through the chat and there's a timestamp on it. So we could tell, oh, this is when Kelly was walking down the aisle and everyone's saying, oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. What is she wearing? And there was a part where uh, my dad sang when my mom and I danced and people were saying how beautiful my dad sounded and how, how they were all in tears because of, it was such a beautiful moment. Um, and so we, again, people got to um, really feel connected with us and we felt connected with them even though they weren't actually there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I think part of that too, the whole process. So we kind of breezed through this, but I wasn't initially super excited about Wedfully initially because I was hesitant about it and just didn't know how it was going to go. We had never, I had never seen anything like it. There was only a few little highlights of weddings on the website. Um, but I do think um, we, you know, we, we had our first meeting with, um, with Caroline, just an intro kind of get more information, but then we signed up with a little bit of reservation on my part, Joe was already 100% in. Um, and then, but got to know our coordinator. So got to work with Caroline um, and really, you know, I mean, we would turn, we would have our meetings while we were eating dinner. So really kind of like built that relationship with her, even though it was just a quick meeting here about, you know, 
our on-site person and what this was going to look like and what that was going to look like. But we really kind of, it was really nice because then when we got to the wedding, we were really comfortable with mm-hmm. her. She was comfortable with us. And, um, and, you know, we just, we even had our guests like making comments about how wonderful our like MC was of the wedding. And just, so that was really, um, it was like a special piece that I didn't expect to yeah. have. Um, with Wedfully. So it was fun to kind of develop that relationship. Um, yeah, and our coordinator was so great to work with. She was very flexible. Um, you know, one of the things that I wanted to have at her wedding was to have karaoke. And, um, you know, we were kind of early on in this stage. So I know Wedfully was still, I think they were about 50 weddings in when we initially signed up. And so she said, well, we haven't done karaoke yet, but she did throw down the idea. And she said, we actually have one that we're going to try in a couple of weeks. And our wedding was still a few months ahead. So I was like, all right, well, let me know how that goes, because I really want to have karaoke at our wedding. Um, and luckily, we were able to work things out. She was very flexible um, and just worked with us. And, you know, like you said before, kind of be creative, um, you know, so we kind of got to bring the best, you know, bring our, our creative side out and, and work on all that. And so yeah. that was so much fun. And yeah, having having that relationship, I, w- I was also pretty nervous going like about two weeks before the wedding. Mm-hmm. And our coordinator actually had she said that her brother got married that weekend and she was working that wedding. And she wasn't said that, that or she wasn't working that wedding, even though she you know, works them. And, yeah. you know, her advice was, you know, just trust the coordinators and she had to do that for her own wedding. So kind of hearing that from her being on the other side of it's her family's wedding mm-hmm. really eased, put us at ease. And we're like, all right, we got to trust her. And yeah. so the day of the wedding, we kind of just just enjoyed each other's company and each other's love and let Wedfully take care of everything. Yeah. And then I think the last piece is we have more of a breakdown on our, Wedfully has a link, which I think they'll send out, but um, of our website. So we kind of have a breakdown of our cost, um, of our cost analysis and kind of like what we spent money on. And we bet we spent about 7,000. That was just kind of like a rough estimate, but um, but we had a tent in my parents' backyard. So we didn't pay for the venue, but we paid for, the tent and, um, and chairs, chairs and, and things like that. Linens, um, flowers, <clears throat> lots of flowers. Yeah, yeah, for those people, for people on site. So, um, yeah, I think that's it. Kelly and Joe, thank you so much um, for being here today. We so appreciate hearing your story. I know everyone on Zoom is loving hearing your actual experience from your wedding day. So thank you so much for your time. Um, We really appreciate it. Um, So now that we've heard from Kelly and Joe, we are gonna move to the Q&A portion of our webinar. So please make sure you're continuing to leave those questions um, in the chat or Q&A function. You can leave a question for the Wedfleet team or Kelly and Joe if you have questions for them about their experience. So I'm going to go ahead and have Brianna jump on and start reading off some of the questions for us. Hi, everyone. Yeah, so our first question is going to be, how many angles do you think creates the best experience for your guests? Oh, I will take this one. I love this question. Um, Okay, so I'd say if you want to do it super simple, two to three is like really simple. So that gives you the aisle view, the ceremony view, and then you could have like what I call like a floater. So it could be like a wider ceremony shot. Um, It could be like a reverse ceremony or yeah, like a reverse ceremony shot. Um, So you get like both perspectives. Um, If you want to go all out, we love vow cameras. So you would have your ceremony aisle and then two vow cameras and the vow cameras essentially go over the shoulder of each partner. And that camera is aimed towards, um, towards the face. So we have like, we would have one over my shoulder and that would be facing my partner's, um, that would be facing my partner's face. So that would be four in total. Um, we've seen as much as six, especially for people who have like a larger area or they have a lar- a longer processional, like a longer aisle, maybe they would have two aisle cameras. So we catch like the beginning of your entrance and then from the middle of the aisle t- up to the altar. Um, so two, four, five, I would say max six. Great question. Very good question. Along the lines of that, Cass, does Wedfully do the camera switching, directing, or does the on-site con, um, coordinator handle all of that? 
Also a really great question. So Wedfully, your Wedfully coordinator handles all of the camera switching. Um, I know with the couples that I've worked with, once we've gotten a little bit further in the planning process, we will start talking about when they want which camera spotlighted. Obviously we have our you know, initial instincts of like what looks good, but if there is a specific moment that's going to be happening, um, that's something that you wanna communicate with your coordinator. I know we've had a bride break out in full song during her vows, which was absolutely breathtaking. And she had a specific camera on her for that and had communicated with her coordinator that that was going to happen. Her partner had no idea that that was that that was happening, but um, it was a beautiful moment and we handle all of that. So we will switch and that's what your Zoom guests will be seeing. So your Zoom guests are going to be seeing whatever camera we have spotlighted in that moment. Great. Thank you, Cass. I think along that too, just let you all know that we have multiple Wedfully people that will be on your weddings as well. So there will be a co-host who will be taking care of the other moments as well, ensuring that your, your guests are receiving tech support throughout the entire wedding itself. And Kelly and Joe, now I have some questions for you from some of our attendees. So I'm going to spotlight you guys. Perfect. First question is going to be, what would you do differently? Yeah, not not too much. I think <laughs> one thing um, later on after we realize it was I would provide a schedule to the guests more because not only you know is this a new uh, experience for you as the bride and the groom, but also not many people have attended a Zoom wedding. So um, we you know we sent the link, but we, you know I would I would have given a more of a breakdown like from four to four thirty is the ceremony. Um, from 4.30 to 5, you know, there's going to be trivia or, you know, whatever you end up happening and then toast from this time to this time. Mm -hmm. um, what we did notice was that a lot of people were signed on kind of at the beginning. And then so people were saying there were probably 250 people signed on. But by the end of it, um, at, you know, we were going to take a group photo. Um, there were probably only 90 or to 100 that were left. And, I, you know, they were, we, we could see everyone that logged in, but we wanted to kind of capture the moment of kind of the peak of everyone being there. And um, I think some people just didn't know, you know, like, should we stick around for toast? I mean, people leave weddings early all the time. So it's like, all right, we already saw the ceremony. We're just gonna go do whatever else we had. Um, so I think that would be our biggest change. Yeah, and, and then I think, I think within there too, like it's also, it's a long time for some people to sit on a computer. Um, mm -hmm. So I think I, you know, I'm not surprised that there were some that needed to jump off like near to the end. So one other thing that we would have probably done different was um, tried to do a group photo if possible, if it works in your schedule um, after the wedding. Um, and then also after the reception is probably what we would have done um, if we could do something differently. <clears throat> That's a great suggestion. Yeah, thank you so much for that. And kind of along the side of your guests themselves, we had a question asking, how did you get your guests excited about the wedding itself? <laughs> unsure about their guests being super excited about it and would love to know how you got them excited. Some of them started drinking way before the wedding started. That helped a lot. <laughs> but uh, that's not what we would recommend necessarily um that was joe's college friends who caused for a lot of entertainment i think on our on our um like wedding itself but i do think um having like having that communication kind of like we said beforehand um and i mean even and i think just like I don't know. I was a little bit hesitant, but I started getting more excited and my dad was nervous about it because he didn't want, um, you know, he was there with us in person because we had our immediate family there and he didn't want it to feel like I was, um, like it was all about the people on the cameras, but we had really wanted those people to feel welcome. So we had, um, we kind of, Wedfully does a nice job of introduce, of saying hi to your guests and helping to kind of um, make that happen. But I think talking to people beforehand um, and just letting them know what to prep for. Um, but then my dad, like I said, was kind of on the fence, but after the wedding, um, he is like, was so on board um, 
so on board. And one thing so. that we also <laughs> did that we really haven't mentioned much is we, sorry, our dog is going crazy. Um, we, we sent out like party favors to a lot of our guests of the week of the wedding. Um, and one of it was we had um, little champagne bottles that had bubbles in it. And um, we had a bubble maker when we were walk after we got married, walking down the aisle and, and asked them to blow bubbles, you know, in their living room. So I think getting that little token party favor mm -hmm. uh, the week of got a lot of people excited. And so we got to see people blowing bubbles uh, when we saw the video later on in the gallery view. Um, and then we also had a, a golf ball that we sent to people. So I think maybe that, you know, getting, getting them involved, sending a party favor um, and again, having that schedule so that they know what to expect uh, is yeah. what we would suggest. Yeah, those are all awesome ways to get your guests involved. I love the idea of being able to have them pre have stuff to celebrate with you guys, have a background to celebrate with you, have the bubbles to celebrate. It's a great way to get them involved and excited to be participating and guests on the virtual end. That's awesome. Okay, some questions for casting Colby. Um, what if you receive a text or call notification during the recording itself? Does it disrupt the stream? Does it turn off the video itself? How does that work? I'll take, yeah. I'll take that like, question. Yeah. I'll take that one because that just happened to me. Um, so you need to put, we'll put all of your devices on do not disturb mode. So our coordinators will actually walk through um, how to set up your devices through Zoom and on the device itself, step-by-step step with your on-site contact to make sure if you get a text message, a phone call, any of those things, it's not gonna interrupt your Zoom stream whatsoever. So. Good question. Great question. <laughs> Good timing. How does a kiss cam work? Does the spotlighting, do we control that? Is that done by the team on site? Yeah, things like that. I'll take that one. So um, I actually did this with one of my couples and it was during the dancing element of their reception. So we had predetermined, okay, they said, Cass, we want you at least like three or four times um, during the group dance to, you know, basically fade the audio. And it's just like you're at a sporting event, you know, we're like, kiss cam, kiss cam. And whenever as the coordinator, I can see who's kissing right on gallery view. So I would then switch the spotlight to whoever that is in their home. Um, a lot of people, um, you can do this even if you don't have someone with you, right? So I had people kissing houseplants. I have seen people kissing their animals, their babies. We love babies on weddings if they're the best. Um, we've seen puppets. <laughs> we've really seen it all. So um, yes, your coordinator han handles the kiss cam because we can see what's happening. And um, we just MC everybody through it. And it's just like, a, again, a really fun way to like interact with your guests. Great. Yeah. And I think along the side of interacting with your guests themselves, we had a question about audio being one way or two way. Can certain people be unmuted during the ceremony at specific spots um, while others are not and continue to be muted? How does that work? That is a great question. So we have a lot of controls on our side of things on the Wedfleet side. So we can mute people if they accidentally unmute themselves. We also have the ability to completely remove the muting privilege from your guests during your ceremony, which is something we do for most of our weddings. So that way there's no accidental um, interruptions. There are times throughout your virtual wedding where you absolutely want people to be able to unmute themselves and, you know, cheer after your ceremony and be able to interact with you. Um, so we do have that ability to make sure that no one is unmuting themselves at the um, incorrect moments, but great question. Great, thank you so much, Colby. Okay, the next question is, so what about those who might be a virtual wedding or pl wedding planners themselves or planners for events that think six weeks is a really short time frame? Can we start earlier and have a further out date where we work with them over the course of a few months. Yeah, I'll take this one. Um, absolutely, you can. Six weeks is really just a good uh, rule of thumb. And we've worked with a lot of wedding planners in the past, and we love wedding planners. Um, we can start like three months out. I think any more than three months, I feel like is not a good idea because plans can change so quickly, um, especially with everything that's going on with COVID. So 
three months, absolutely. We can start working with you. We can start planning with you. We really can do whenever. I mean, but six months, six weeks is like the minimum amount of time, I think, but we can always do more. Great. Thank you, Cass. Okay. And one of the last questions I'm seeing right now is, are there standard equipment recommendations and can the phone's equipment be leased through other vendors rather than purchased or using your own personal phones? Great question. I will take this one. <clears throat> so Cass talked um, a little bit earlier in the webinar about all the different types of equipment that we suggest for your wedding. You can actually rent all of that through Wedfully. So we have a couple different package options that you can get a phone, tripods, um, a hotspot even if you're worried about having enough um, cell phone service. So we have lots of options for you to rent directly from us. All of our coordinators are well-versed in how to use all the equipment. So we make it super easy, send it to you, give you all the instructions, we test it out. Um, and then you just simply put it in a box and send it right back to us. If that's not something you're interested in, we have lots of recommendations for you on different places you can buy those things from or other re recommendations on, we sh you should use this person's cell phone or maybe try and use this person's cell phone. So we have lots of options when it comes to the actual physical technology itself. Great, that's so awesome. It's nice that we have the ability to rent out these tech pieces as well. So it's kind of push button that way. So you could do it through a vendor or through Wedfully or use your own tech, which is fantastic. Um, on the opposite side of having a lot of time, what if they have less than six weeks to plan? Yeah, I'll take that one. So um, at a minimum, we require two weeks 14 whole days, not just business days, 14 whole days to plan your um, virtual wedding. That is the closest, tightest timeline that we can do, um, just because that allows us to set the couple up for success. It allows to set the coordinator up for success. We offer a lot of add-ons to just the base Wedfully package. They're absolutely optional, but there's some that you might want to take advantage of, and some of them do require a longer lead time, or we at least prefer a longer lead time. So for an example here would be a surprise video. This is where you give us your entire guest list and we reach out to your entire guest list and ask them to submit up to a one minute video clip um, recording well wishes and blessings for the two of you on your wedding. Um, as I'm sure you can imagine, people can be slow to respond. And we want to be able to gather as many submissions as we can. And that typically takes more than two weeks. Just that process alone takes more than two weeks. So um, if you are on a tighter timeline, like I said, we need two weeks to plan your wedding and you should go into it just sort of being a little bit prepared that maybe you cannot take advantage of all of the add-ons that we do offer, which a lot of them are interactive elements. Some of the add-ons are. So it's just something to think about. Yeah, Cass, and alongside what you were just talking about, can you talk about, do you suggest either using invites that are sent through the mail, paper invites, or virtual invites themselves? Yeah, I will. Um, so we love evites. We use paperless post as our preferred um, evite vendor. We have a relationship with them and they have absolutely beautiful designs. Um, the beauty of an evite is that it's really one click or at least it's two clicks. You know, you have to open up the, the, the evite themselves and then it's one click from there directly logging them into your virtual wedding. So it's very seamless. It's great for people who have guest lists that maybe they're not super tech savvy. Maybe you have some older family members and you really want to ensure that they can make it on the Zoom. That, allow, that allows you to do that. Um, we have some, we've had a lot of couples who send out paper invitations in combination with evites as well. Um, what you get from, your, from us and from your coordinator is you're going to get a password protected Zoom link. And that's that one click option that I was talking about. You're also going to get a meeting ID and a passcode. You can personalize that passcode up to 10 characters, but that's what people are putting on their um, paper invitations is the meeting ID and that passcode. So when you go to Zoom, it allows you to manually type in 
the meeting ID and then it allows you to manually type in the passcode and then you can click join. We are actually researching um, creating QR codes for some future couples. So for those who do choose to do a paper invitation, that would be a really nice option. Just keep in mind that a QR code is typically scanned on a phone or a tablet. So um, I don't believe you're able to scan a QR code on a laptop. So those guests would be joining via a phone or a tablet. Great, thank you so much, Cass. One that I saw further back was about recordings. So is the wedding recorded? And if so, will the view be just of the bride and groom or will the guests also be shown engaging themselves? Um, I will take that question. So um, yes, you will get two different recordings from the Wedfully team. So you will get the speaker view version, which is basically the way that your guests will be watching your wedding. So you'll get to see us um, switching between the different camera angles. The recording is going to look like a seamless sort of video experience. So you'll get that recording and then you'll also get the gallery view recording. Um, there's some limitations to that. So you will get to see a little bit um, of your guests and their live reactions to um, to your wedding. So you will get those sent to you from the Wedfully team um, 14 business days after your wedding date. We do edit those just a little bit. So you're not getting hours and hours of footage, but you will get those that is included in your package. You get those sent to you no matter what. Great, thank you so much for answering that Colby. Okay, our next question is about what is your one must recommendation for a virtual wedding activity? Okay, I will take that. And it's, you can't just pick just one, but I would say if you were to pull all of our past 600 at this point plus weddings, they would say the group dance and the toasts. Those two things are so emotional. They're so heartfelt. They're fun. They're engaging. You're dancing. You're crying. You are um, getting to witness all of your loved ones. If you have a big monitor, like I talked about earlier, you can see your loved ones all dancing right with you on the screen. And if you pick a really great song, everyone's going to be super hyped. And we love Jumbotron spotlighting everyone. Um, for toasts, I personally love pre-assigned toasts. I know we have different opinions on this on the Wedvilly team, but I love pre-assigned toasts. So you and your partner have decided maybe four or five people that you want to speak at your wedding. You've communicated those um, individuals' names to your coordinator. And let's just say, let's just say they're all virtual. So we're able to um, speak with them ahead of time. So your coordinator will reach out to those people ahead of time. Hopefully they've joined your rehearsal call so we can do a dry run through with them, but we're able to spotlight them in their home and they can um, read or you know shoot from the hip, whatever they have, if they have something prepared or they don't have something prepared. Um, and this is like water work central. This is where it comes in. And as this, um, these individual toasters are speaking, that's what you're, that's what the, the couple is seeing. They're seeing on their end, this one person speaking directly to them while on Zoom, we're all seeing actually probably both of you at the same time. So it's very emotional. And then we always switch the camera view back to the couple afterwards so they can respond and do a cheers, do a toast, you know, thank you so much. That was amazing. And we love you so much. We wish you could be here. Um, yeah, I love toasts, if you can't tell. Toastings are such a great way to have your formal toasts involved. And then you can also open the floor if you wanted to, to have short little toasts from those who might want to say a few words. Um, it is a great way to give those who are supposed to be there on site or do a mix of on site and virtual um, and give them that moment to say some well wishes and give you love. So up next, I'm gonna ask Kelly and Joe the same question. What is the one thing that you would include for that wedding activity itself? Um, well, I mean, I think my one of my favorites was the group dance. Um, if we had had more time, we would have added probably another, another dance. group dance. So that's, um, we did have toasts in person um, and some toasts that were virtual. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, just the smoothness of everything was, was um, it went off really, really smoothly, like switching from an in-person to a virtual and we had a little TV screen so you could see those toasts happening. Cause um, I want, I had, I had 
five virtual groomsmen. Um, and so that, that part I really enjoyed because we were kind of back and forth. Like, should we even have a wedding party? And these guys were just so important to my life that I ended up writing them a letter and said, will you be my virtual groomsman? And no one really knew what that meant, but um, it was really cool. They, they did a good job of switching the camera. So I walked down and then I look, could look at the screen and then I could see my friends in, um, in San Francisco walked down and then my friend in Los Angeles walked down, my friend in Chicago walked down, my other friends in, the, in Nashville walked down. So it was, it was like they were actually following me, me down the aisle. And I, I really love that part of it. That's awesome. And one other question for you guys, would you have done a Wedfully wedding if it wasn't a pandemic and you didn't have to have a limit on your guests themselves? So I don't know. First of all, I mean, just because I don't know that we would have sought it out if it was just not having read about it, but um, knowing what we know now, we, I mean, I think we would, I speak we would hire Wedfully all we over would, again. We would do it all. We would do a virtual wedding all over again, um, especially um yeah with wedfully we yeah. were um i mean like from the the obvious standpoint is cost i mean like we didn't have to buy dinner or drinks or a venue for anybody so and everyone still got to really experience it and as yeah. we said earlier you know like some we've been to plenty of weddings where you're in the back of a church or the back corner of of a of a hall and you can't hear what's being said you you don't know what the cake looks like um and through Wedfully, you know, you had that front row seat and you really got to feel like you were a part of it. Yeah. Um, so I, I mean, think... I would love to attend more virtual weddings and obviously we're not gonna have another wedding, yeah. right? Okay. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, like even if, even if we could have 200 people there, there's probably still another 50 or 100 that would not be able to make it, whether it's health related or yeah. they're in school or they have to work. And so if they could still jump in via, via Wedfully or via Zoom, uh, we would definitely use them again. Yeah, I yeah, I would second that. I mean, I would say even we would probably have more people if it weren't a pandemic. Mm -hmm. If we did it again, um, but knowing what I know about Wedfleet, um, definitely would use them. So yeah, you don't have to worry about the drama of oh, who's sitting next to who at a table, and you know, should this, should I invite this person or not? It's like guess what, you don't have to really talk to that person if it's like if it's a strategic thing or sorry, <laughs> I should get muted automatically. <laughs> No, that was fantastic. Thank you guys so much. And thank you for being a part of that. Um, it really helps being able to have this kind of response and it helps everyone who's attending understand what we're doing. And now I'm gonna pass it off back to Cass. I'm gonna get back to some of these answers in the Q&A itself, but I'll leave it off to Cass to take it off. There's a couple options for next steps for you. Um, you can talk it over one-on-one -on -one with a Wedfully team member. You can talk to Kelly and Joe. Kelly and Joe take info calls. So if you wanna to talk to Kelly and Joe more, hear more, more about their story, ask them specific questions about what they did at their wedding, you can do that. We're gonna put that link in the chat as well. Um, if you wanna start planning, if you're ready to go, um, please visit wedfully.com and you can click uh, start planning in the right hand corner. And then we've been hard at work on our YouTube page. So we've got a lot of real wedding footage that you can watch on our YouTube page. Um, I'll also put the link in the chat as well, but there's lots of options for you. We want to talk to you. We want to answer your questions. We understand that this is new and we are at the forefront of disrupting this, this wedding industry and providing this affordable option. So just let us know what questions we can answer for you because because we want to be helpful. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Have a great night and be well.